Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the history of the development of the enzymology. We have also discussed about the naming and as well as the classification of the different enzymes. And then uh, previous two modules, uh, we are discussing about how you can be able to produce the protein or the enzyme in the bulk quantities. In this context, uh, we have discussed about the cloning of the enzyme from the genome. Either you use the genomic library or the cDNA library to select the gene of your interest or you can use the polymerase chain reaction to amplify the gene of your interest using the site specific primers. Once you have the gene of your interest, then you can, uh, you know, digest that with the restriction enzyme and you can clone that into a suitable vector. Once you got the clone into a suitable vector, then you can transform that into, a, uh, into the, uh, you know, the, into the host and that's how you can devise the different strategies to overexpress the protein into the host. So all these processes, what we have discussed so far are called as upstream events or upstream processes where you are going to clone the protein or you are and then you are going to transform the protein and then you are going to overexpress the protein into the host cells. Uh, now what we are going to discuss today is once you have the uh, protein in the host cells, you, how you can be able to recover that protein and how you can be able to purify that protein using the different chromatography techniques. Now, what is chromatography? Chromatography, the purpose of the chromatography is to separate a complex mixture into the individual component, exploiting the partition effect, which distribute the molecule into the different phases. A distribution of a molecule between the two phases, A and B, is given by the distribution coefficient. So, distribution coefficient uh, is distribution coefficient Kd is equal to concentration of molecule in phase 1 divided by the concentration of molecule in phase 2, okay. So, this is actually going to be not a fixed value, it is actually going to vary and it is going to be related to the molecule what you are talking about and also depends on the, uh, the different types of partitioning agents. So, it can also depend on the column what you are going to use or the beads. So, um, you can imagine that if I am taking the beads and if I am taking a column, right, I can actually be able to fill the different types of beads, right. And that's how I can actually be having the different types of distribution. So, molecules actually can distribute from the first layer to last layer and that's how the molecules are actually going to be separated. So, in most of the chromatography techniques, the phase A is a stationary phase. So, in the consideration of the phase 1 or I will say phase a actually at the phase B, right, or a matrix and the phase B is a mobile phase or the buffer actually. So, you can imagine that if I am talking about the distribution coefficient of a protein in the column, that means the consideration of the molecule in phase A, that is the matrix and this is actually going to be the buffer. 
Now, this is all about if you have the mixture of the proteins and you're, if you're loading them, it is actually going to have the different layers, right? You can imagine that I have different layers. And all these layers are actually going to interact with these molecules and that's how they will actually going to distribute between the this phase or this phase. Similarly, when they will enter into this phase, it is actually going to partition between this phase or this phase. And that's how these molecules are actually going to be separated. So how the chromatography is separating the molecules? So column chromatography. In a column chromatography, a, a stationary phase is filled into the cylindrical tube made up of, of glass or steel. So this is the cylindrical tube where you have filled the beads, right? Uh, they can be made up of, of glass or steel. The mixture of analyte is loaded onto the top and it runs from the top to bottom. Now, how the distribution coefficient is exploited in the column chromatography? Assume that you have two molecules, X and Y. So if you imagine that you have two molecules, X and Y, and the KD, the KD X is 1 and KD Y is actually the 9. Okay, this means they are actually going to be get separated in a 1 is to 10 ratio. So X and Y with a KD value of 1 and 9 and they are traveling through a column with a water as a mobile phase. As they will travel, X and Y will partition between the stationary phase and the mobile phase. So you can imagine that the X is actually going to be partitioned. So okay, what is, if I write the KD X, what is mean by is concentration in matrix divided by concentration in buffer. And since the KD value is 1, that means the concentration in the matrix and the concentration in buffer is going to be 1 is to 1, which means if I imagine that if I loaded the 5 mg of X and 5 mg of Y, then what will happen is that if it runs for 1 ml, the 5 mg out of 5 mg, the 2.5 mg of X is going to be on top and 2.5 mg would be in the second layer. Okay, whereas for the case of Y, where the KDX, KDY is actually uh, concentration in matrix versus concentration in buffer, right? And KDY is what? 9 actually. So KD9 is 9. This means the concentration in the matrix is going to be 9 times than the concentration in the buffer. So it's going to be 9 is to 1, okay? This means if I loaded the 5 mg, so this is the condition for the X, right? If I change the color, so this is for Y actually. So okay. So if if it is for the Y, uh, for Y it is going to be uh, 0.5, 4.5, right? In the matrix phase and 0.5 in the water phase. Okay. Now you can imagine that if this continues, what will happen is that the Y is actually going to be immobilized on top of the column and the X is actually going to immobilize at the bottom of the column because X is actually trying to stay with the, uh, with the buffer phase and Y is trying to remain with the matrix phase. And so this is actually going to Y and this is actually going to be X. And that's how it is actually going to be get separated. So what you see here is this is actually going to be Y and this is actually going to be X. And that's how when you elute, the X is going to come separate first and the Y is going to be get later on. So as there is a change in the difference, there is a huge change in the difference in KD, Y will be associated with the matrix and remain on top of the column, whereas the X will move along the water. At the end of the chromatography, X will come out first, whereas the Y will come out later on. Now we we'll discuss about the chromatogram. The plot of the elution volume along with the absorbance is known as the chromatogram. So if you plot the uh, detection signal along with the time, then with the pattern what you're going to see is that is going to be called as the chromatogram. And this chromatogram is going to be give you the information about uh, when you have injected the sample, when you are actually going to see the first uh, elution of the first protein or elution of the second protein, third protein, fourth protein and fifth protein. And based on this, uh, you can be able to decide 
it's how well the column is actually separating the two different peaks. For example, in this case, the A peak and the B peaks are getting separated from each other, whereas the C and the D are actually getting merged. And why the C and D are getting merged? Because the C is eluting like this and D is eluting like this, okay? And because of that, it is actually saving, it is actually, they are both are sharing a small area. And in this small area, both the B plus C are mixing to each other. So indirectly, what we can say is that they both are actually having the overlapping base and these peaks are called as the fused peaks. So the volume or the time is taken for the analyte to come out from the column is known as the retention volume or retention time. The chromatogram may have separate peaks such as peak A and B or the peak C and D with the overlapping base. And these peaks are called as the fused peak. So in other words, we can also say that the resolution or the ability to separate out the two peaks for C and D is also low for this particular column. So how we can be able to calculate the resolution of this particular column, okay? Or how you can be able to define the resolution of a column. So resolution is the ability of a chromatography column to separate two analyte peak from another and it is known as resolution. It is defined as the ratio of difference in the retention time between the two peak and average of the base of the peak, which means the resolution is directly proportional to the difference between the two peaks and it is going to be inversely proportional to the average of the base of the peak. So what you see in this particular experiment, this is actually the delta TR, right? This is the difference in the retention time between the A and B. And what you see here is that if I measure the base of the this A wavelength and the B, I can make an average of these and that is actually going to give me the average of the base of the those two peaks and that is actually going to give me the resolution of this particular column. When the resolution is 1, the separation of the two peak is 97.9% and a column with our resolution more than 1.5 is considered the good. The number of distribution event governs the ability of a column to separate the to analyte. In another word, the resolution is directly proportional to the number of distribution events. In column chromatography, each thin plane of column, column matrix participate in the distribution of the molecule. Assume that the height of a distribution plane is H, which means the peak of the diameter of the individual beads what you are using is H and the length of the column is L, then the number of distribution plane in the column is given by L by H, okay, because, and uh, if you do this so, and if you do a mathematical calculation, what you're going to see is N is equal to 16 TR by W whole square, which means the N is 5.54 TR by W uh, under root whole square. So that is actually going to define the resolution of a column, okay. And uh, you can be able to indirectly say, if this number is very high, it is actually going to say that the resolution is very high. Now, hence, the number of distribution plane in a column is controlling two parameters and how the resolution is getting affected by the number of distribution plane because as the number of distribution plane will go up, it will allow the NLI to travel for a longer period of time. Consequently, it will increase the distance between the two peaks, which means the delta TR is actually going to be on a higher side. Whereas, as it, the number of distribution plane will go up, it will reduce the width of the base of the peak as, as a result, the peak will be more sharper, okay? Uh, you can imagine that this is the word a representative image. So if you have the n is equal to 10, you are going to see a flat peak actually. If you increase the number only by 10 times, you are going to see a peak actually, okay? But if you increase the number further up by 10 times, okay, you will see that the width of the peak, base of the peak is reducing, which means that if you increase the number of distribution plane, you are actually going to have the larger TR, right? So TR is going to be large and the WAB is going to be small, okay? And you know that the resolution is in directly proportional to TR 
and the resolution is inversely proportional to the WAB, which means if N will go up, the resolution is also going to increase. And that is how the, we are always saying that when you are packing a column, you should be able to ensure that the packing should be very compact so that the number of distribution plane should go up. As the number is increasing, the peak width is decreasing. Hence, the number of distribution in a indirectly indirect way in the number of distribution plane is an indirect way to measure the column efficiency. Higher n number is desirable for a better separation. So, apart from the column chromatograph, columns, what you are going to use in a column chromatography, you are also going to use a chromatography system which you are going to use to run the column and as well as to monitor the illusions. So, in a typical chromatography column, you have the multiple uh, uh, materials, you are going to have the reservoirs. So, number one, you are going to have the reservoir, number two, you are going to have the pump, number three, you are going to have the mixer, number four, you are going to have the sample injection loops and number four, you are going to have a column, right, so this is the column. Number 5, you are going to have the detectors and number 6, you are going to have the fraction collector and number 7, you are going to have the recorder. So, reservoir is nothing but the, uh, so you can have the one or more reservoirs so in, the, uh, in the chromatography system. So, you can have the two reservoirs, A for, uh, so both for the individual buffers. In some of the chromatography system, you will find the four reservoirs. And uh, then you can also have the pump. So, you can have one or two pump to flow the buffer from the reservoir. Different types of pumps are used in the chromatography system, mostly based on the pressure level required to perform the chromatography. So, chromatography systems will have the one or uh, two pumps and uh, they are actually going to be connected to the reservoirs. So, so the one pump is going to take the liquid from the A, A, A buffer. A, a, a reservoir and the uh, other pump is going to take the liquid from the other pump. And uh, depending on the pressure levels, uh, the pumps can be of low pressure columns or the high pressure columns. Then you can have the mixer. So, just after the pump, you are going to have a mixer. This mixer is, uh, is required to mix the buffers that is received from both the pump to form a linear or the step gradients. Then we can also have the column. So once you have the, you know, the buffer, what is going to be prepared, it is going to be flown into the column. This column can be made up of a glass or the steel. So depending on the pressure, what you are going to use, you can have the for the low pressure chromatography or middle pressure chromatography, you can use the glass columns. But for the high pressure chromatography, you are going to have to use the steel chromatography, steel columns. And after this column, you are going to have the detectors, right? So, detectors are actually going to detect when the liquids are passing through that particular detector. So, the illusion comes out from the column, goes into the online monitoring system to test the presence of the analyte based on the different properties. These are different types of detectors are known in chromatography. You can have the UV visible detectors, you can have the fluorescence detector, you can have RI detectors, you can have the mass spectrometry and so on. Once your detector is going to give you and detector is going to give you the pattern in terms of the, you know, the chromatograms, that chromatogram you are going to visualize on the data recorder and analyzers and uh, or the recorders actually. So, the profile of the illuent with respect to the measured property in a detector can be plotted in a recorder. So, recorder is nothing but a computer nowadays. So, on the computer screen, you are going to, you know, monitor the recorders and based on this, you can actually be able to collect the fractions, to collect the particular protein into a different fractions using the fraction collectors. So, in a fraction collector, the element can be collected in different fractions by a fraction collectors. So, this is all about the chromatography system and uh, I would like to take to my lab for a small demo so that a student will actually explain you how to connect the column, how to perform the chromatography using a chromatography system from the uh, G Health Sciences. In this video, we will show you how to operate a PLC instrument and the basic uh, principle laying mechanism of how, uh, separation of the proteins using a PLC. FVLC nothing but fast protein liquid chromatography. 
we can say it is a uh, derived version of HPLC. Uh, the main difference between HPLC and uh, FPLC is FPLC can only be used for the uh, separation of the proteins and sometimes small molecules also if we have uh, columns available. But in HPLC, we can use columns for separation of small molecules. Uh, suppose uh, if you have enantiomers, that also can be separated using HPLC. The columns what we will use for uh, HPLC and FPLC also differs. In case of FPLC, we will use plastic columns, but in case of uh, HPLC columns, we will use steel columns. Because the main reason why we are using like this is, if you use uh, stainless steel columns in FPLC, because of the salts and uh, high concentration of the salts and uh, different uh, materials we are using, it may corrode the steel. So that's why uh, there may be uh, improper uh, separation of the component which we want to separate. So that's why we will use uh, only plastic columns in this one. The separation of the proteins in through FPLC is based on the size and shape of the protein. So if you have like in uh, gel filtration chromatography or size exclusion chromatography, in all those mechanisms like uh, size exclusion gel filtration can be applicable in FPLC also. So it depends on uh, what column you are using. So if you want to purify uh, histone proteins, you can use nickel NTA column, prepapered column. Suppose if you if you want to only separate high to low molecular weight proteins, you can use any gel filtration column suitable for your protein. But the principle behind the separation is same. So these details of like uh, size exclusion or gel filtration we have shown in previous video. In this video we will show how this instrument can be operated. We are in our lab we are using Octavio. This is from GE Health Sciences. So all the component whatever we show it is uh, similar in other instrument or other companies instruments also. But only the architecture of the instrument changes. So uh, let's see what are the parts uh, it contains. So this is the instrument. It is connected to uh, a system for observation purpose. So in this system, it contains uh, this uh, stationary phase. This is the column. This is the mobile phase. That means buffers. This is the area where we will keep all the buffers. So it starts with the pumps actually. So these two are pumps, this one pump and two pump, these two sets. Whatever buffers are coming from this buffer tray, it will enter here. Okay. These pumps, whatever the pressure they are getting, they can be regulated here. This is the pressure monitor. This. So once here the pressure is monitored, it will go to mixer. This is the mixer where two different buffers. Suppose if you are using, uh, if you are purifying uh, uh, through nickel NTA column. So in that case, you need imidazole in a separate uh, buffer prepared and one is the equilibration buffer. In that case, uh, if you want to elute that protein, particular uh, histone protein, you have to mix both the buffers A and B, for instance. So those buffers can be mixed here. Once the mixing is done, it will directly goes to the uh, inlet loop. So once it entered into inlet loop, it will go to uh, this chamber where it it can be connected to the column. So the top portion of the column it will connect here. We will show you how to connect the column in uh, uh, in 
in the coming video so after that whatever it comes it will enter here uh, it will enter here and it will come directly into the uv chamber where the eluted component will be detected so starting the instrument uh, there is a power button uh, right side of the instrument you have to just turn on that instrument then you can see a white light is blinking here that means the system just started so after that we will go to uh, this software part for analysis of any illusion we can use uh, this it comes with the instrument it is the unicorn software we use for analysis purpose so just double click on that one and it will take you to the software so it will give you three pop-up windows one is method editor another one is system control and evaluation classic so this is system editor where you can see chromatograms and uh, the other one is evaluation classic where you can analyze your chromatogram just go for system control the first thing we have to do is uh, connect the instrument so here you can see the connected uh, instrument octapure 25 so just say ok now it will connect the system so this will give uh, different uh, we can change uh, different uh, commands using this software just go to manual execute manual so this is the manual instruction software or dialog box where you can change uh, things so here uh, different parameters you can change uh, through this pop-up window uh, like uh, uh, pumps uh, flow path and various parameters such as monitors just to go to pumps so here you can change the system flow so uh, we can keep up to uh, 20 ml uh, if uh, there is no column connected so normal condition you we can keep 5 ml also so you, you just say insert this thing in order to execute it by system now here it is monitors very important thing we have three wavelengths here we can monitor at three different wavelengths so your choice you can give uh, so we are giving 280, 259, 254 just insert and say execute so it started you can see the green path is highlighted and also chromatograms appearing in the chromatogram area so it will give three different uh, chromatograms so one corresponding to blue that is 280 nanometer for tryptophan tyrosine fluorescence second one is 254 nanometer for rna or dna related and third one is 215 for peptide so here we can see the path of the flow uh, how it is connected starting from buffer a so here buffer a and it will go through the pump uh, and uh, mixing through mixer it will go to all the way to waste so here uh, different parameters we can change during running we can change b also if you want to change b you just say start pump b so see we can see highlighted area if you stop the program it will save automatically see you can see uh, some dialog box appears preparing for new run this is software introduction this is these are the buffers we are going to use for this demo uh, the buffers need to be filtered through 0.2 micron filter and also degassed for uh, degassing purpose we will use 
uh, bath sonicator. So it will remove any uh, any uh, hair or air bubbles present in the buffers. It will remove those things. So we are using the most common buffer that is phosphate buffer with having pH 7.4 and this is the uh, milling cube water and this is 20 percentage ethanol. All the buffers were filtered through 0.2 micron uh, filter paper and also degassed. So uh, we have washed already, uh, the system already been washed. So now what we will do, we will connect the column. So here uh, precautions need to be taken while connecting this thing. So if you are, if you have any air bubbles through these loops or the uh, or the piping system, it will directly enter into column, which will destroy it. So to prevent that, we have to make sure all the loops and pumps got washed thoroughly, and then we will connect in running condition. Uh, before connecting the column, uh, we have to remember few points. This column, whatever the beads are there, this is in a 20 percentage ethanol. So, if you directly connect it, already ethanol is there, whatever the flow rate we are giving, it will give more back pressure. So, the bit between the, uh, the distance between the column filter and the beads, a uh, settled beads may increase. So that will reduce efficiency of the column. So what we will do, we have to change these pumps into water. So we changed into water. Now we can connect it to the column. Here also some of the precautions need to be taken. If you are using chilled buffers, okay, uh, suppose you need cold buffer. So that means uh, you have to bring those all the components of the system to uh, the temperature which you want to use for your purification. Otherwise, if you are having a chilled buffer which directly enter into column that may clog or precipitate some of the uh, uh, salts present in the buffer inside the column. So that will also reduce the efficiency. So this is also need to be uh, taken care uh, while running the FPLC. Before connecting the column we need to adjust few parameters. So here is the software system flow. I am keeping 0.5 ml per minute since we are going to connect the column. So if the flow rate is more, then the pressure alarm may come. So after that, we have to oh, set the monitors. So this is also I am going to set. system flow 0.5 insert and now we have to set alarms at what pressure you need to uh, get alarm so i am keeping this point uh, 8 is fine so once it is done you can insert then execute so next here this is the column connecting portion. So where here, this is this is the upward portion where we have to connect with the column. Now we are not using column. So just we have to go to the column. We just click this one, column down flow. So from top to bottom. Now you can see highlighted one. So you cannot directly connect to the column. First you have to fill the buffer or uh, water in this loop so that there is no air bubbles. Just open the top of uh, upside of the column 
okay with this buffer itself you just directly connect after connecting you have to take out the uh, lower portion of the column otherwise it may bust also but it is not the case because uh, if is if there is any uh, high pressure you will get alarm so here uh, this is the bottom portion of the alarm uh, you can see the buffer here if you if the buffer is passing through the column so as we can see uh, there is a fill up of water in this thing so once you see complete fill up of the this loop or this knob you can directly insert the lower portion once you see the buffer filling in you just have to connect with the downward portion so now the column is connected to the system and you need not to touch anything everything will be operated on the software so here uh, see once the column is connected you can see there is a change in the uh, different the uvs and conduction of the uh, buffer this is uh, this is uh, the red one is the sorry this red one is the for conduction and uh, the uh, green one is the concentration of the and uh, these are three different uvs now we are washing with the water so after once uh, completely we removed uh, 20% ethanol then we will equilibrate in the uh, buffer so the the main purpose of the equilibration is uh, suppose if you are prepared your protein solution in a suppose say phosphate buffer so you have water you are not equilibrated with the uh, phosphate buffer then you cannot expect good resolution of good separation of the proteins and also the proteins may not be stable in the other condition like in water so they may degrade or they may not be useful if you are uh, uh, interested in the enzymatic reactions so that's why we always do equilibrate with the equilibrate the column with the same buffer which our protein of interest is desired so this will also helps good resolution and uh, keep the intact of the structure of the protein so we are indirectly we are providing similar conditions uh, for the protein so it will behave in a native condition so we completely washed out the ethanol whatever present inside the column now we will equilibrate in the uh, phosphate buffer so as we can see here the conductance is completely uh, comes to zero and uh, we can see the completely flat line flat signal corresponding to uh, uv280 so that means uh, there is no ethanol inside the column in addition to that we already washed uh, 30 ml of uh, water so the total column volume uh, inside the column is it is around 25 ml so we also wash with 5 ml extra so uh, we can be sure that it is completely removed now what we have to do is we have to just pass the things whatever we set already without disturbing anything so here we can see a pass symbol you just pass then come here and change the switch to buffer so once that is done we will reset these things to continue mode so we can see it is again activated 
so uh, we have equilibrated the column using the equilibration buffer so as we can see here there is a stable line corresponding to uv utility and uh, there is no uh, other elution coming out so with this we can confirm that uh, uh, we equilibrated the column properly so it's time to inject the protein solution and other material so for injection purpose this is the port where we are going to inject the solution uh, protein solution and this is the loop whatever we inject through this uh, injection valve it will be stored inside this loop the size of the loop depends on how much protein you want to inject and uh, the column capacity so we have uh, 1300 hr column also it is uh, it can it can be uh, used up to uh, you can inject up to 1 ml so in this column in this column we cannot inject that much if you want to inject we have uh, the company people might also give this kind of loops so this we will we will connect as shown in here and we will use for the injecting the protein solution so what we will do is we have to set few parameters here so here flow path so injection valve you have to show it inject here so insert this one okay once that is over we just have to insert the protein solution and execute the command so as we can see here uh, the chromatogram here uh, the protein is eluted so it uh, uh, 13 ml of retention volume so if you want to uh, say if you want to uh, identify the protein molecular weight or determine the uh, unknown protein molecular weight you have to run this kind of uh, analysis like uh, you need to be uh, known that uh, what is the protein molecular weight, known protein molecular weight so which is available actually I, I mean commercially available so you have to take that protein and uh, just inject based on that you have to uh construct a calibration curve between log molecular weight and the kv that is partition coefficient which is calculated based on the uh, elution volume subtracted with void volume divided by total volume subtracted with the void volume that will give partition coefficient so whatever you will get you will get a uh, graph straight line and based on that straight line uh, you can get unknown proteins uh, molecular weight so that can be discussed in uh, gel uh, size exclusion chromatography now we will show you how to analyze the results so uh, this is the uh, software used for evaluation purpose evaluation classic so you have to go to file open chromatograms so you have to locate where your file is uh, kept just open that one and say ok so here uh, you can uh, you are seeing so many things uh, this one correspond to, to pressure and conductance so you can customize the things like what you want to see in the his, uh, chromatogram is only uv 2 it so you just uh, keep those things and uh, remove all those things okay and here also it is showing 380 you don't need 380 you want to uh, take up to 65 so you just go and change the uh, y axis so
so like this. so you can see this is the chromatogram peak is very sharp so you can also uh, integrate the peaks so this is uv 280 integration so just say uh so it will give the uh, exact retention volume of the each and every peak how many peaks are present so here we can see 12.86 this is the major peak what we have so uh, with this uh, you can analyze the results so if you want to calibrate you have to calculate retention volume for all the proteins whichever you are using for calibration and construct the calibration curve be, uh, between partition coefficient and log molecular weight so with this you can uh, identify unknown proteins molecular weight so in this particular FELC demo we showed you how the instrument works, what are the different parts and what are the precautions we need to take while running the instrument and how the software works and how to uh, analyze these things. So another point uh, we forgot actually, this is the fraction collector. So while your protein is editing, suppose your protein is editing at 12, so started at 12, you want to collect fractions from that time onwards till the end of the edition. So what you can do, you can use fraction collector also from main window. This is the fraction collector, it will automatically moves. So here it contains the sensor, but you need not to touch anything. Okay. So uh, in uh, main system control, here fraction collector, there is an option for fraction collector how many fractionation you need to be done uh, when you need to stop fractionation and uh, how much feed to uh, fractionation outlet valve all these things you can set there in addition to that uh, you can also set system uh, gradient flow uh, suppose you want to elute uh, a protein with the gradient you don't know at what concentrate at what particular concentration of imidazole if you are using uh, nickel nta column or at what particular concentration the protein higher or lower molecular weight uh, eludes so with this you can uh, just adjust the concentration and length you have to give in uh, suppose 60 minutes so what system will do it will over 60 minute of time it will increase 0 to 50 percentage so you can do this one reverse gradient also so first you will give uh, 15 and uh, time you can keep uh, just uh, uh, suppose one minute so from time uh, when you start the system it will st starts with the 50 percent of the B and reduces to 0 so uh, all these things will make you familiarize how uh, the system works with the fast protein liquid chromatography. So hope uh, these things will help you to achieve your goals in your research. Thanks for watching. Now we understand how a fast protein liquid chromatography works. So after using the instrument, we have to uh, from buffer to water we have to change the valves because if you are directly keeping in the 20 percent ethanol it may the ethanol which are present in the buffer and uh, the proteins or salts present in the column they may get precipitated and clog the column so it is a better practice first you change this uh, buffer system to water then wash thoroughly whatever the salts present inside the column it got eluted then again you change to the 20% uh, uh, ethanol for uh, preserving purpose that need to be remembered for uh, a better performance of the system now we have the different forms of the chromatography you can have the partition number one you can have the partition chromatography or number two you can have the 
adsorption chromatography. In a partition chromatography, in this form of chromatography, an analyte distributes themselves into the two phases, liquid stationary phase and the mobile phase. The major advantage of this chromatography is that it is simple, low cost and has a broad specificity. It is further divided into the liquid-liquid chromatography and bonded phase liquid chromatography. The examples of in this chromatography is cellulose, starch and silica matrix. Whereas in the adsorption chromatography, in this form of chromatography, matrix molecules has ability to hold the analyte on their surface through a mutual interaction due to the different types of forces such as hydrogen bonding, electrostatic interaction, wonder wall forces and so on. The examples are ion exchange chromatography, hydrophobic interaction chromatography, affinity chromatography and so on. So, these are the different forms of chromatography what you can actually be able to use. You can have the partition chromatography where the molecules are actually going to be partitioned between the uh, liquid stationary phase and the mobile phase. And, uh, and, and you can also have the adsorption chromatography where the molecule is going to be adsorbed onto the matrix molecules and they will actually go in to hold that molecule for a very, very long time. because. The, mat, the, the groups what is present onto the matrix are going to perform, going to show a different types of interaction with the um, analyte molecules like such as hydrogen bonding, electrostatic interaction and wonderful forces. So, uh, this is all about the how you can be able to process a sample and how you can be able to recover the protein from the cell by the uh, different types of cell disruption methods. And once you got the, the crude mixture where you are going to have the enzyme of your interest and the other proteins, you are going to perform the chromatography techniques. And so very briefly, we have also discussed about the basic principle of chromatography and how your different uh, form of chromatography can be used to purify the proteins. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to take up some of the chromatography techniques and uh, we are also going to discuss how you can be able to utilize them to purify the enzyme of your interest. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.